Hey, COBOL! Again. COBOL is a programming language that was designed in the 1950s. Because of that, there are many outdated parts of the language. Like how all lines end with a period except for when they don't, and how lines tend to want to be very long. I made a video about COBOL last year. If you want to watch that, watch that. But I must say, 75% speed is your friend. So, COBOL is primarily used for business things, and screw that, let's make a game in COBOL. Why? Well, because it's a completely stupid and terrible idea. And stupid and terrible ideas are my middle name. The game I will be making in this project is Breakout. Or Arkanoid. Whatever you want to call it, it's a game about using a long rectangular bat to break some stones with a ball. And it's going to be Christmas themed because of December. But hold on! COBOL isn't object oriented, and that's kind of necessary for making games. OBJECTION! Since 2002, COBOL has been object oriented. Probably to make it so that it would be more modern and people would actually want to, you know, learn the thing. That didn't really work, and now there is a shortage of people maintaining all of the actually useful COBOL programs like, I don't know, the ones in banks where you keep all your money stored. But anyway, another hurdle you may have noticed right off the bat get it, because Breakout has a bat, I'm sorry, is that COBOL doesn't support graphics. Well, to solve that problem, let me introduce you to... Can you just get on with it? Visual COBOL for Visual Studio! Wait, wait, wait just a second. So there was enough demand for COBOL to exist in Visual Studio in a fashion where you can create form applications, that a company is not only selling it, but is selling it at such a presumably high price that you need to get a quote to even know what that price is for the PERSONAL EDITION! YES! But I won't be paying the super high price and I will be using the free trial. So the first part of this game that will need to be created is the bat, because that's where the player's interaction with the game lies. The visual COBOL form editor is a lot like the form editor for C Sharp or Visual Basic. Because it is the form editor for C Sharp or Visual Basic. Here is the game's one and only form. It has two picture boxes. One is imaginatively named Picture Box 1, and one is imaginatively named Picture Box 2. Obviously, based on their appearances, Picture Box 1 is the bat, and Picture Box 2 is the ball. They are colored red and green because Christmas! The rest of this video, aka the parts where I show you the hell that is COBOL code, will be separated into three parts, starting with the bat. Much like any other Visual Studio programming language, clicking the lightning will allow you to choose an event to write code for. The form itself has a key press event, and that is what we will use to get player input. Clicking that opens up the COBOL code. Ah! That's terrifying! I thought this was Christmas, not Halloween! So, first impressions are that it is very blue. Second impressions are that not everything is capitalized. In fact, nothing is capitalized. That is because COBOL doesn't care whether or not you capitalize things. And third impressions are... Really? So this long mess of a line underneath the method header is what I can only call the rest of the method header, meaning that it specifies the formal parameters, their object type, and whether or not they are passed by value or reference. Also, you can define a method header like this as well. I'm not sure why there needs to be two ways to do it, especially since this way is how everyone else does it, and this way is just COBOL trying to be special. Anyway, using e double colon key char double colon two string while inside the key pressed method, we can determine which key the user just pressed, as long as it can be turned into a string, so no arrow keys. When the character pressed equals d, any code between that if statement and end if will be run. By the way, are you noticing any consistency flaws with this yet? When the user presses d, the bat should move to the right. If you try to add four to the picture box's x location, you won't get any errors, but it will do NOTHING! So in order to fix that, I declared a data item in the working storage section called A, set A to the picture box's x coordinate plus 4, and set the picture box's location by calling the point object constructor. And now it works! Moving to the left is done in a very similar fashion. Now we have a working bat. Yippee. In the program's working storage section, I declared four variables. Two for the ball's coordinates, and two for the ball's velocities. Also, if you haven't noticed by now, COBOL attempts to mimic English. Because this is how people talk in English. In the procedure division inside of the constructor method, the constructor method, by the way, is the code that gets run when the form is created, those variables will be initialized. The ball will start by moving up and to the right, and the ball x and ball y variables will be set to the ball's current location. 
Anyway, the form will have an invisible object called a timer to handle the ball. The timer will start off being enabled and it will run its tick method every 50 milliseconds. Inside of that tick method, the ball will move by setting the ball x value to itself plus the x speed, doing the exact same thing with the y, and completely overriding the ball's location using the point constructor, similar to moving the bat. The ball also needs to bounce. There will be four if statements that will be used to bounce the ball. If the ball hits the top of the window, the y speed will be set to positive 4, making it move down. If the ball hits the left side of the screen, the ball's x speed will be set to positive 4, making it move right. Similarly, if it hits the right, it will move left. The next bounce is... Oh no, what is this garbled mess? Okay, I'm not even going to attempt to walk through what this single line that goes across the whole screen does, but I'll describe it simply. Actually, I'm just noticing this while editing. This is actually on two lines, because it's so long that Visual Studio cannot handle it being on one single line. I've never seen that happen before. Also, another thing to note, Visual Cobol does not have the same line length restrictions that regular Cobol has, so lines in Visual Cobol can be much longer. If the ball is low enough that it touches the bat, and it is between both edges of the bat, the ball starts moving up by setting the Y speed to negative 4. Now we have a ball that bounces off the walls and the paddle. Time to add the bricks. For the bricks, I'll need to generalize things more than I usually do. In Breakout, there are a lot of bricks, and they all do the same thing. It would be nice if they were all generated on their own, and that's exactly what I did. In the form class itself, working storage section, this distinction is very important, by the way, it belongs to the form class itself, an array of bricks is defined. Er, a TABLE OF BRICKS! Why does COBOL want its own terminology that's separate from everything else? This is an 8x3 table, and the way it is defined as being that is both hilarious and stupid. Inside of the form's constructor method, which runs when the program starts and is also where the ball was initialized, the bricks will also be initialized. Like the form as a whole, a method in COBOL can have its own local variables in a working storage section. That's why that distinction is important. The form constructor will have two local variables, CT1 and CT2. Those will be used to represent the current cell we are looking at in the table. They are set to 1 at the beginning, because COBOL is the spawn of Satan and decides to start arrays at 1 instead of 0. Next, the equivalent of two nested while loops is used, except that it is way more verbose than it needs to be because it is COBOL. The several lines inside of these loops basically set up a single brick, and because we're running it several times, when you run the program, you get a bunch of bricks at the top of the room. For collision, I actually ended up creating a new method and running it from inside the timer tick. It uses another collection of nested perform loops, and it uses the stupidly long collision code. It is basically the perfect storm of everything annoying about this COBOL project rolled into one single thing. When the ball hits a brick, no I'm not going into the logic of this stupidly long line, it reverses its Y direction and sets the brick's visibility to false, meaning it won't show up anymore. Also, before colliding, the code makes sure that the brick is visible. If not, no collision takes place since the brick's already been destroyed. And now we finally have Breakout! Of course, this version of Breakout is very simplistic and unpolished, but I would expect that it wouldn't be overly difficult to add scoring or lives or something. So, given that, should I make my next game project in COBOL? No, absolutely not. This was not a fun experience, and I can imagine for most people, programming in COBOL would not be a fun experience. Things simply take way too long to do in it. But hey, at least now we know that making a game is possible in COBOL. Also, I really wish there was an English-like programming language that already came with Visual Studio and was, you know, free with the program, because Santa would give it to me. Anyway, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time, and Merry Cobol!